Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about how I passed the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam in 15 days. I want to share my experience with everyone. So if you are taking the same exam, I hope this review video can be useful to you. Let's talk about my study schedule first. I have been interested in cloud computing. I have uh, hear people talking about AWS Web Service, uh, Microsoft Cloud Computing, Google Cloud Computing, and so on. So I want to know more about cloud computing concepts. The reason I choose AWS Certified Exam is that looks like uh, Amazon is the market leader in cloud computing market. Netflix is using Amazon AWS Cloud Computing Platform Capital One, Goldman Sachs, these kind of uh, financial companies are also using AWS service. I'm thinking since AWS is a market leader, AWS must have uh, very good features. I want to learn AWS. I want to know more about AWS. That's why I choose AWS certification exam. Let's talk about uh, my study schedule. Uh, I have a, a day job, so I'm very busy for my job, but uh, I do have a, a winter break from December 24th, 2021 to January 9th, 2022. It's about uh, two weeks off. I'm thinking I can use these two weeks off to completely focus on the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. That's why I scheduled my exam at 6.30 p.m. on January 8th. I told you I have my day off until January 9th, right? The reason I didn't schedule my exam for January 9th is that I was thinking no matter if I pass or fail the exam, I need at least one day off to clear my mind before the new semester starts. So I didn't schedule my exam until the last day of my uh, winter break. That's why I scheduled the second last day to my winter break, 6 p.m. on January 8th. The reason I choose the evening because I know my schedule is tight, so I do need one day to prepare, one more day to prepare. That's why I didn't schedule the early morning exam. I scheduled 6.30 in the evening. Before the exam, you need to check in. No matter you go to the exam center, or you take uh, the remote exam, you need to get into the exam at least 30 minutes before the exam starts. I highly recommend you to check in as early as possible. For example, I took the remote exam. I need to use my own computer. During the check-in process, the system tells me that I need to turn off several functions, services on my computer, on my laptop. So if you are not a very technical person, you will probably have this kind of technical issues. And if you are taking the remote exam, nobody is besides you to help you. So you need to check in the exam earlier so that you can figure out these technical issues ahead of your scheduled exam. You need to bring at least one form of government issued ID. Once you register for the exam, you will receive a reminder email. That email will tell you what types of ID are accepted for checking in. So I will not repeat this requirement here. During the exam, you cannot eat or drink. The exam will last for 90 minutes. You need to answer 65 multiple choice, multiple answer questions, and everybody gets a different type of questions. So no one will tell you what types of questions you will get ahead of the exam. You will get the pass or fail results immediately after you submit all your answers. So you can immediately know if you have passed the exam. If you have passed the exam, five business days after you take the exam, you will receive a digital badge. That badge shows you that you are already certified by the AWS Cloud Service. 
This is the overview of the exam. Oh, by the way, I study from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day during December 24th to January 8th, except for Christmas Day and New Year's Day, for the obvious reason. But for other days, I start from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. So I wanted to completely focus myself, concentrate on this exam. This is my study schedule. If you have had uh, some IT background knowledge, not advanced level, just the fundamental level, and you are like me, you can study for this exam eight hours a day. I would say passing this exam in 10 to 15 days is doable. But if you don't have any IT background knowledge or you have a busy schedule, you can only study for this exam two to three hours a day, every day. Then I would say passing this exam in three months is feasible. This is the study schedule part. Next, let's talk about uh, what learning materials I used for preparing this exam. I used the two major learning materials. The first one is an online learning system. It's offered by AWS. It's called the AWS Skill Builder. It's free. Everyone can use it to learn AWS, all kinds of services, exams for free. I really, really liked this system. I will list this website link down below. You can access them for free and start learning for the exams and all kinds of skills. If you have already had an Amazon account, you can simply use your Amazon account to log in the AWS Skill Builder system. There are tons of learning materials in the market to help you prepare for the certification exams from AWS. But the AWS Skill Builder is the only official learning system and it's free, so why not use it? As I keep telling my students, nowadays, all learning materials are online and free. The question is not about whether or not you can access to them. The question narrows down to whether or not you want to learn them. I really like uh, the AWS system because it can offer this kind of learning materials for, for free. It will reduce your preparation cost to the minimum. The other major learning material I was using is the AWS white paper. It shows all AWS services, what they can do for the customers. What is the most cost effective way to use all of these systems? When you prepare for the exam, I highly recommend you to clearly remember all services listed in the AWS white paper and what they can do for the customers. Which way is the most cost effective way? This will be tested heavily in the exam. I will also list the latest AWS white paper link down below so you can access to them for free. I have been spending so many hours learning AWS exam. After the exam, I questioned myself. So after you learn so many knowledge, can you use just one sentence to summarize what cloud computing is? Here is my answer. A cloud computing system, in my opinion, is a system where your data are running on Amazon Web Service hardware. Since you have a collaboration with Amazon, there is a connection between your data, your property, and the Amazon's hardware. Amazon has to clearly define who should take responsible for any loss. This is called the AWS Shared Responsibility Model. It clearly defines who should take care of uh, the responsibility for the hardware infrastructure, who should take responsibility for data security, operating system security, and so on. All of these responsibilities are defined in the AWS Shared Responsibility Model. This model will be heavily tested in the exam as well. 
Simply speaking, anything you can interact, you can control, is your responsibilities. For example, you may use the Elastic Cloud Compute web server for your system. Since you are using this web server, you are responsible for updating the operating system of this server, taking care of the security software of this server. This is your responsibility as the AWS system user. But since you don't have a, a physical computer, physical hardware, the physical hardware part is taken care of by the AWS, then the security of the physical hardware is the responsibility of AWS. You need to study this shared responsibility model very well. So when you are given a case study, you can differentiate who should take care of what responsibilities in the AWS system. The next important knowledge point is what consists of AWS? I'm not sure if you have used the LAMP infrastructure to build a website. LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. This is the traditional way of building a website. Corresponding to LAMP, since we move our web server to the cloud, in AWS, LAMP equals to EC2, S3, RDS, and Lambda. You will learn all of these particular AWS services in the Scale Builder website. I will not repeat it here. But uh, you do need to know what AWS consists of. This is another important knowledge point. The next important knowledge point is the five pillars of the AWS well-architected framework. Amazon wants to use this framework to showcase the benefits of using AWS services. The benefits include operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and the cost optimization. You will learn all of these five important pillars in the Scale Builder learning system. Make sure you remember them very clearly. In the exam, you will be given a lot of case studies. You need to identify which benefits each company can get by using what kind of services. For example, if a company uses AWS to reduce overhead cost, which benefits does this company get from the five pillars? Obviously, cost optimization, right? You will receive similar questions in the exam. So remember these five pillars very well. You will learn the five pillars and the shared responsibility model and the hardware infrastructure, all of this important knowledge in the Scale Builder Learning System. So make sure you use that system very well. Remember every word of this system tells you. After you complete the courses in the Skill Builder website, you need to do some final touches before taking the exam. What I mean is you need to remember every service listed in the AWS white paper. As I told you, I list the white paper link down below. You can download the latest white paper and read every service AWS offers. Remember each service, what that service is, what this service can do for the customer, which one is the most cost-effective way of using each service. These are important knowledge points before taking the exam. In the exam, you will receive a lot of questions asking you which service can help the customer to achieve the purpose. AWS also offers some sample exam questions. I will list the example question down below as well. But in my opinion, those sample questions appear too easy, much easier than the real exam questions. What I would suggest you to do is remember clearly everything in the white paper and everything taught by the Skill Builder website. Those two learning materials are more important. So I just uh, completed the exam yesterday. 
I want to record this video before I forget anything. I hope this information can be useful to you. Good luck to your exam.